So I think the plan under Bloomberg has been, you know, the more rich people we can bring to the city, the more big, large scale corporate development we can bring to the city, the more big chains we can chain stores we can bring to the city, the better. I mean, I think really that's been the economic development model that, um, you know, upscaling and creating a city that's more appealing to tourists and rich people is the goal of economic development. And they wouldn't disagree with that. I think they would say that that's, Bloomberg says it all the time. He says, you know, we need to bring more rich people to the city because then we're going to tax them and that's going to pay for the services that everybody else needs. It hasn't, in, I don't think it's really worked out. This upzoning was a giveaway to developers. I mean, the, the people who wrote the downtown Brooklyn plan had a lot of vested interest in it. They made a lot of money through it. They were developers and they were landowners in downtown Brooklyn. So once the area was upzoned and developers could build higher, the, the value of the land increased by 20, 30, 50 times what it was worth before the rezoning. So it was a way to make money. Um, it was not responding to the need for housing in the city because it was only it only created luxury housing. I mean there was a tiny fraction of affordable housing that was built and even that is totally unaffordable to the the people who've lived in Brooklyn for generations. I mean you you could make $130,000 and live in an affordable housing unit in downtown Brooklyn right now. So, you know, it's uh the public benefit was small, but the the scale of it was huge. I mean, uh in the space of a couple of years, we gained 7,000 new units of housing, almost all of it luxury. Um, and there's another 5,000 now in the pipeline. So we're going to see twice as much as what we have now coming. Um, and so to me, the problem is not the density. It's the lack of equity in the plan. So I don't necessarily have a problem with them building dense housing, especially around a transit hub, which is what they part of their rationale and I think that makes sense but the problem is the jobs that we're creating in downtown Brooklyn are not jobs that anybody who works at is going to be able to af afford to live in the neighborhood and work at I mean if you're coming to work at a, a big box chain store and you're making eight or ten dollars an hour you can't live in downtown Brooklyn you're commuting in now from East New York or the Rockaways to work that job, right? Because that's the only place you can afford to live. So the whole model is, it's supposedly based on sustainability, but in reality, it's creating an incredibly uh, segregated and divided city. And uh, we've always had that to some extent, and it's really been exacerbated over these last 12 years, or I would say the last 25 years, really. To me, instead of just uprooting 100 small businesses from downtown Brooklyn and throwing them to the wind uh, with no assistance, we should have created a zone for small business that if you had been there for years, you could have some subsidized rent for a while because people downtown were having their rent going from $15,000 a month to $45,000 a month overnight. No business, no matter how successful, can withstand that kind of rent increase. So the city should be, when they put a rezoning into place, where they know it's going to displace businesses, they should put in a plan to help those businesses weather the transition. The 2010 census showed that for the first time since the Civil War, there was a loss of blacks from cities, American cities, in the top 20 U.S. cities. So that means that black people are leaving cities, whether they're getting pushed out of cities by gentrification, which is part of the story, or whether they just have more options for living other places. That's the other interpretation. So this gets spun different ways depending on how you see it. Like I remember seeing a New York Times article that I was kind of upset by because it basically was like, oh great, there's not as much discrimination in the suburbs, so blacks have more choices now. That could be true, but I also know that blacks are being forcibly pushed out of center cities um, because of this whole movement of, you know, the redevelopment of cities and cities becoming a place for, you know, making money now. Um, I mean, cities have become a major site of capital accumulation.
I do know that, know that in order to have massive reinvestment, you got to have disinvestment somewhere else. So, I mean, all these people that are getting pushed out of Bed-Stuy, for example, are creating a crisis in the neighborhoods beyond. I mean, East New York is in a housing crisis now because there's so much, so much disruption in the housing market because all these people are getting displaced from Bedford-Stuyvesant. They're moving out further into other neighborhoods. Well, that's causing rents to go up in those other neighborhoods, and then more people get displaced there because they can't afford their rents. So there's a ripple effect of this stuff, and then where do people end up? They end up on the street or in shelters. So the film is about the redevelopment of Fulton Mall in downtown Brooklyn, um, and I started making it because I was approached by an urban planning graduate student at Hunter who was also a journalist. Her name is Allison Dean. And she came to me at Hunter College and said, did you know that they're doing this huge uh, rezoning in downtown Brooklyn and it's going to completely change the area? And I said, wow, Fulton Mall, I don't really know it that well, but it seems like a very popular shopping district. And she said to me that it was actually the third most profitable shopping district in New York City. And contrary to the city's perception that it was kind of a failed space and not very successful. It was actually incredibly popular with the people who shopped down there. So um, it was visited by 100,000 people a day. Um, it had all kinds of, uh, kind of a mix of small mom and pops and medium-sized chain stores. Um, and it was just a really, really uh, vibrant social hub. And what the city was doing and has now done is that they did a change in zoning, which allowed them to, which allowed developers to come in and build um, high-rise market rate or luxury housing, and that displaced more than 100 small businesses. And so they've really changed the character of this shopping area um, from something that was um, a lot more uh, sort of had a lot more character for one. I mean, the area looks a lot more like every other area of the city now. It has a lot of those same chain stores you'd see if you walked on 34th Street. Um, so there's been, you know, it's just changed. They've made, they've changed it from one kind of area to another. Um, so the film explores that, and it also talks about um, gentrification in the surrounding communities. So all those neighborhoods like Park Slope, Fort Greene, and um, all those areas that have now become very hip, upscale neighborhoods. Um, I've sort of lived through the changes in those since 1988 um, when I moved to Brooklyn. And so I'm hoping that moving forward, we can get Mr. de Blasio to, to drive a slightly harder bargain with these developers. I mean, I think that de Blasio is going to be under a huge amount of pressure. I mean, I don't think you can be the mayor of New York City without engaging with real estate um, and, and Wall Street. So I think that, you know, he's walking a fine line and he said yeah. it's going to be up to the public to hold him to his campaign rhetoric. I think that nothing's going to happen if we don't get engaged. You know, I think there's going to be more attention paid to this question of equity.